All right, so we're going to look at the Tang and Song achievements. So what have they achieved? So the question for this set of notes, what are the economical, that means money, how money is coming in, the economical, cultural, and technological accomplishments of the Tang and the Song dynasty? So when you write your summary on this essential question, you do want to make sure that you do talk about all three of these topics, the economical, cultural, and technological technological accomplishments of both the Tang and the Song Dynasty. So your summary for this section may be quite long, just simply because you're covering a lot of different topics. So keep that in mind. All right, cities and trade. Changzhan is the capital of the Tang Dynasty at this point. It is also the largest city in the world. So at this point during the Tang Dynasty, Changzhan was the largest city in the entire world. Wrap your head around that, right? It's a mix of many different cultures. Remember that trade really lent itself to bringing a bunch of different cultures together. So it's a mix of many different cultures in this one city. It was a religious and philosophical center, very similar to Timbuktu and Constantinople, where the capitals become these religious and philosophical centers, these centers for education and religion and economics and trade. They really become almost a hub for the entire dynasty to revolve around. Trade made China very rich and created a very strong economy. So China has very specific things that it is able to trade for, similar to what we learned about Africa. There's very specific items that they trade that other countries do not have. And they were able to create a very rich and strong economy based on that trade. The Grand Canal, we covered this from the Sui Dynasty. The Grand Canal helped carry goods from north to south in China. Um, they also traded on the Silk Road. The Silk Road, remember, goes through three different continents, Asia, Europe, and Africa. So the Silk Road is another way that they were able to expand their trade. And not only that, it was able to mix the cultures. This is how cultures were able to come in and out of China and really create this very unique sense of culture in this dynasty specifically. And this is where we're really going to see an expansion of the culture as well as a mix of different cultures to create something brand new. Sea trade became very important. And this is where the invention of the compass is going to come into play. So sea trade became more important. And as they were able to develop stronger sea vessels, like what you see here, they're called longboats. Once they were able to create stronger sea vessels, they had to figure out how to navigate the sea. And that's where the compass is going to come in. And that's also where our map makers are going to come in. These people that are going to basically chart where is China based on all of the different oceans and the different continents. And all of those things are going to come together and make sea trade so very important to expand the Chinese culture, expand the trade, and also boost them economically. They develop porcelain, which you see here, these blue pottery pieces. It's a very thin, beautiful type of pottery. There are specific types of pottery that we're going to take a look at a little later in this chapter, but porcelain is basically a thin type of pottery. It's, um, if you have bowls in your cupboard that you use for like cereal, things like that, that's very similar to porcelain. Um, they're usually some sort of clay, but the same idea. There are porcelain dolls, so dolls that are that are um, made out of not glass, but porcelain, very thin, but it'll still shatter just like glass. So that's porcelain. And they also invented paper money. So paper money, we use it, right? Most countries do. Almost all countries do. But they were the first ones to actually invent paper money. This is going to be very vital for their economy and their trade. Because at this point, they no longer just have to trade for items. They can actually sell things for money. And that piece of paper now has value to it. 
So let's take a look at arts and inventions. So we're going to look at the Tang Dynasty artists and poets. So Wu Daozi painted murals about Buddhism and nature. We studied Buddhism before, and we know even from the Africa chapter that nature is very symbolic to most countries. So Wu Daozi, he would um, paint murals about Buddhism, about their religion, and then also incorporate elements of nature. Li Bo and Du Fo were both poets, very famous poets too. Um, some of the artists would make animal figurines. So you would see a lot of different sculptures and figurines specifically for animals. This is just a little excerpt out of The Quiet Night Thoughts by Li Bo. Before my bed, there is a bright moonlight so that it seems like frost on the ground. Lifting my head, I watch the bright moon lowering my head. I dream that I'm home. Very sweet little sonnet. Okay, so let's take a look at the Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty had Ling Qingzhao. Ling Qingzhao was a very fa famous female poet. Now, let me talk a little bit about the idea that she was a female poet. She actually had to pass herself off as a male most of the time when she was trying to get her poems published because it's not, um, it wasn't common at that time for women to really have a voice. And by being a poet, you have a written voice. And so at the very beginning of her career, she had to basically disguise that she was a male instead of a female. And then as she became more and more famous, it came out that she was actually a female poet. And um, similar to how we talked about Empress Wu, with Empress Wu, it was very uncommon and she was the only ever empress uh, ruler of China. So you could kind of tell by their cultural aspects that um, being a woman in very high standing was and being listened to and having a voice was not very common, especially during this time period. So they had a specific kind of pottery, a specific kind of porcelain pot pottery called celadon. So celadon pottery usually had like this greenish blue tint that you see here. So it was a very specific type of pottery specific to the Song Dynasty and this time period. Woodblock printing, this is another one of your key terms. So woodblock printing is very important because it would form a page, an entire page of writing carved into a block of wood. So instead of the um, woodblock printing, that it's not woodblock printing, it's um, little tiny figurines. So you would see these characters one at a time. And they would use it like a stamp and they would have to do the entire page one character at a time. Woodblock printing obviously took a lot of that out and they were able to print books so much quicker. They would cover this with ink. You could kind of see that ink was smeared on top. So you could kind of picture like a stamp. You stamp it, you stamp on the paper, done, right? This was an entire page being stamped from the ink to the paper. So they were able to produce books much quicker this way. Then we have gunpowder. So gunpowder was a mixture of different powders used in guns and explosives. Now, let me tell you this. This was never meant to be used as in guns, in ammunition, in weapons of any sort. This was actually made originally, as you'll see in some of your research, they were actually trying to make some sort of toothpaste. I know that's kind of shocking. They were actually trying to make some sort of toothpaste. And if you choose toothbrush as one of your um, inventions, it'll go a little bit into gunpowder. But it was actually a doctor trying to create something to clean the mouth and it ended up being an explosive. Not exactly what you want in your mouth, right? That's going to bust all your teeth out. However, when they found out accidentally when they lit it on fire, it got too close to a flame or a spark or something like that, they realized, wow, this is explosive. They started adding color to it and we get fireworks. 
So the actual use of gunpowder was originally for celebration, for explosives, for fireworks. Then they realized, well, hmm, if we can make those explode, what else can we make explode? And then they started making explosives like TNT to blow things up. Um, and then also figured out that it could be used for ammunition for weapons. So um, gunpowder was never actually made to be gunpowder. It was an accident that somebody stumbled across. And um, once they realized what it was, was it ended up being one of the greatest inventions. Um, I would say the greatest invention besides paper from the Chinese culture. So paper was one thing we all use it. We use it still today, right? Paper, post notes, paper everywhere. Um, and then gunpowder has become something that also they have become very known for. So things that we still use today from ancient China, we do not use woodblock printing anymore, but woodblock printing was a very rudimentary form of what we know as a Xerox machine, a copier, right? So even though it has advanced technologically, it had to start somewhere and it started in China. Okay, let's take a look at the magnetic compass. So remember when I said as they started to venture out more into sea trade and created these long boats to take their trade even farther to other countries and islands and things like that, they need to not get lost at sea. Very important, right? Don't want to get lost at sea. So how are they going to do that? Well, somebody created the magnetic compass. So this uses the Earth's magnetic field to show direction. So compass will always point north. If you have a cell phone, it'll use satellite, but a cell phone will also have a compass on it. Um, I have an Apple Watch, has a compass on it. It will always point north. So if you know you're supposed to be going south, you wanna go opposite of whatever way it is pointing. So basically that kind of tells you where you are, depending on which way you're going, in correlation to where the compass is pointing. The compass will always point north because that's where our magnetic field is. Um, movable type, this is what I was getting to when we were talking about the um, woodblock printing. Movable type, you can kind of see every single one of these is a completely different character. They call them character in Chinese writing, they're not letters, they're characters. So each character means a different thing. So an actual character will mean an entire animal. So instead of printing out, let's just say cow, you don't spell out C-O-W, there's one character that means cow. So one of these tiny blocks would mean cow. So usually just one character per word. Um, so basically the idea was you could you could form a letter, you could form a sonnet, you could form a poem or a story by using these characters to create those sentences. Not really sentences because they're not words, but you get the idea. So it's a set of letters or characters that are used to print books. So you're able to move these around and reconfigure them to tell whatever story you want page by page, line by line, instead of like woodblock printing, which would be two whole pages of a book all at once because you can make multiple copies over and over and over very quickly. Movable type is individual blocks. All right, so here I have three different videos on Chinese inventions. One of these videos, you could click on any of them you want. To record on your Cornell notes, you will choose one of these videos to record notes on. Um, it doesn't matter which one because they're all part of a series um, and they all cover many different inventions. So you could focus on just one invention if you want. You could talk about multiple inventions, but um, at least watch one of these videos and record notes. My plan is that we will watch one video a day. Since I see you three days a week, we'll watch one of these videos one day, one another day, and then one on Friday. That's my plan, um, but we'll also be watching the lecture on the first day I see you, so it might be a very long period. So we'll kind of play it by ear, but you do have access to all of these videos. You would just have to click on them. They're YouTube videos primed and ready to go. 
This is a great place also to get lots of different ideas for your Chinese one-pager invention project. All right, so we're gonna skip through those. There we go. So we've reached the end of your notes. You're gonna mark up your notes at this point. Remember this counts for half of your Cornell note points, so please do not skip this part. So you're gonna fill in your notes for this section um, that are blank from your video, from the videos and the textbook. In this one, um, you wanna make sure that you're filling in any blank bullet points that are on there. You're gonna underline vocabulary and keywords, highlight main ideas, do not highlight the topics, highlight main ideas under the topics. Each section must have a question in the questioning column. Either you can make your own for that question or that section, or you could use one that I'm gonna give you an example of right now. So for um, Tang and Song for arts, you could say what type of art or um, what were the names of the famous poets of the Tang Dynasty? What was the name of a famous poet from the Song Dynasty? Um, what were important inventions? So when we get to the invention part, what were important inventions that were invented in China? Um, let's see, the economic piece, how did they expand economically? Through trade, right? Any of those questions would be appropriate in the questioning column. You cannot leave the questioning column blank. You will lose points for that. The idea is the questioning column should line up with the notes on the other side. I get a lot of people that say, well, I don't have a question. You're supposed to make a question. It's not that you have a question that you're still wondering about. This is like, this question is answered here. This question is answered here. It's kind of a different way to study your notes. And then finally, answer the essential question below your notes in two to three sentences. This one might be a little longer because you are covering a lot of different topics. So answer your essential question in the summary. Let's talk about this one pager. It's one of my favorite projects. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna research any of the Chinese inventions from your book. There's a big list in your book. It could be any of them from the video, from this slideshow and lecture, any Chinese invention you want. You wanna make sure that, first of all, it is a Chinese invention. A lot of countries claim that they invented something when it's really just a variation of something somebody else created. So you wanna make sure it is a Chinese invention. So if you pull one from these videos or from this um, Google slide deck or from your textbook, you're, you're pretty self-assured that this is gonna be a Chinese invention. So you're gonna choose the invention. Tell me what the invention is. You're gonna describe that invention to me. And then you're gonna tell me what it's used for. So like for instance, the woodblock printing is used to print books, right? Page by page, very quickly reproduce books. So you want to tell me the uses of it. You want at least two images. Two images because a lot of times when you find an image for something, they look different, like pottery has so many different ways that they use pottery and porcelain and celadon. So if you choose something like that, give me a couple of examples, give me a couple of images because they're gonna look different. Even the compass, the compass looks different. You could find so many different types of magnetic compasses. So give me a couple of different images. And then tell me other interesting facts about your invention. So I want you to find something that it's like, oh, I didn't know that. Like, for instance, gunpowder was never meant to be gunpowder. Gunpowder was meant to be something else entirely. So that would be something interesting as well. Um, if you do something like the longboats, longboats were not successful at first. So after we watch that video, you'll kind of get a little bit of information about longboats. Long boats was a very finicky technology and they lost a lot of long boats before they found ones that would actually float and take them far. So um, interesting facts about your invention. And then you want to cite your source. So if you found it on a specific website or a specific video or you read an article, do not plagiarize. Cite your source. 
even if it's as simple as putting the website somewhere on your one pager, at least I know where you got the information from. So make sure you're not plagiarizing. Don't just copy and paste a whole thing from Google or whatever it is and paste it on your paper. Do not plagiarize. We're using a Google Doc. It does have a plagiarism um, cheat mode on it. So it'll tell me, oh, this was copied and pasted from this website. So don't be that person. Cite your source. Let me know where you found that research. So at the bottom here, you can see it says you can design your one pager however you want. It could look similar to this where you're using like bullet points or dashes and then put the information next to it. You could write all the information in a paragraph. You could write it like an article. I will share with you some that have been done in the past because I've been doing this one project for years. So, um, and I always use Google Classroom to do this project. So I have a lot <laughs> from the last several years. So I will share some ideas with you to see different ways of putting together your, um, putting together your one pager. But as long as all this information is there, Feel free to design it however you want. Add background, do whatever you want. It cannot be on a Google slide, it must be on a Google Doc. So we're gonna use a Google Doc for this one and you'll see that on your assignments. I will give you a blank Google Doc to write your one pager on. And that brings us to the end of our lecture and the end of our instruction on how to do your invention one pager. Um, so you have notes, you have vocabulary and a one pager specifically on one Chinese invention of your choice. So those are the three activities for this week. Because you're gonna be spending a lot of time doing the one pager and we're gonna be watching many different videos on inventions, there's no assessment review for 7.2, okay? So I want you to focus on that project. So once your notes are done, that project is gonna be your focus for the rest of the week. So just let me know if you guys have any questions and that's it. We're all set and I hope you guys have fun with this project. It's one of my favorites.